Welcome to our online worship service from Grace Lutheran Church, Hastings, Michigan. We're glad you could join us this day. Right now, as I am taping, the Relay for Life is going on. Had a wonderful representation in the sense of a lot of uh, dollars and luminaries set up from Grace Lutheran Church. Thank you for your support in that. Wanted to also invite you to sign up for the Barry County uh, Crop Walk for Hunger. That's coming around the corner and it's October 13th. Also wanted to thank you for your partnership and hand-to-hand -hand program as we feed students on the weekends. We've done very well so far. Thank you for your partnership. All these things help us know and realize that we are the picking up our cross and denying ourselves and following Jesus. That's one of the main things that Jesus says this day, that we should focus on others, focus on the ways of God, and focus on God's way of love. May we do this each and every day. Let us enjoy worship at this time. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went on with his disciples to the villages of Caesarea Philippi, and on the way he asked his disciples, Who do people say that I am? And they answered him, John the Baptist, and others, Elijah, and still others, one of the prophets. He asked them, But who do you say that I am? Peter answered him, You are the Messiah. And he sternly ordered them not to tell anyone about him. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering, be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves, take up the cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words and this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Boys and girls, I come together near the communion this day, for many of us wonder, well, who is Jesus? And, and for me, it's receiving Jesus in body and blood, to receive that mysterious gift that comes to us each and every time I can gather together and gather with the assembly and take communion. It is such a gift to receive Christ's body and blood that we can know that we can lay ourselves down or be far down as far as we can in hurt and agony, and Jesus comes and lifts us up. And one of those special times when we enjoy Christ's presence, we get to break the bread and drink the cup of salvation, the blood of Jesus Christ. May we continue to know this gift of life and share it abundantly with others. Let us pray. Dear God, help us always accept your gift of life and love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks for coming. See you next week. Grace, mercy, peace be with you from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. One day when Jesus and his disciples were traveling through Caesarea Philippi, on their way towards Jerusalem, Jesus paused to give his disciples what today we might call a reality check. Who do people say that I am? He asked them. 
Who do people say that I am? They say you are John the Baptist, one of them replied. Someone else said Elijah, while others said that he was seen as one of the prophets. But then Jesus asked, but what do you think? Who do you say that I am? Now that's an interesting question. After being him with so long, did Jesus really believe that his only disciples were not sure who he was? Why was he asking them? It is true that even celebrities are hard to recognize sometimes, like presiding Bishop H. George Anderson. Bishop Anderson was the ELCA bishop for only six years, and he was visiting each synod of the church, and people flocked to meet him. I was sitting near the front of Trinity Lutheran Church, Akron, Ohio, when a very friendly pastor came up and asked if he could sit with us. I was visiting with several of my classmates I had graduated with from Trinity Lutheran Seminary, and we began to get reacquainted with each other before worship was to begin. Everyone was doing well, and we included our new friend into our conversation about how things were going. He said that he missed teaching, and it was so good to see so many people in the church today. We worshiped together, and he said to me, it was so good to worship our gracious God together. Thank you for allowing me to have a normal church experience. Little did I know that the pastor speaking to me was our presiding bishop of the ELCA. I knew he looked familiar, but I thought he was a pastor from our synod, who I just didn't know real well. I did not recognize him as our presiding bishop. After worship, several close friends came up and asked me how I knew Bishop Anderson so well. I looked at the first person and said, that was Bishop Anderson? No way! After the first person asked, I had several others ask a similar question. My answer was simple. I welcomed the stranger as if he was a friend. I didn't know the man I came to see. I didn't know that he would write a few books and was leading the ELCA. I wonder who people see when they see us out and about. I wonder if they see a glimmer of Jesus as I saw Jesus in Bishop Anderson. And so I think about Jesus' question for his disciples. There were a lot of people who would not recognize Bishop H. George Anderson, but surely Bishop Anderson's 12 closest staff members would know him pretty well. Yet Jesus asked his disciples, who do you think I am? I wonder how quickly the disciples answered this question. After all, it's always easier to say what others think than to say what we personally believe. It's always easier to answer such a question by saying, well, my grandmother believed this, or my mother always taught this, or my pastor once said that. It can sometimes be very difficult to voice our own opinions. Maybe that is why Jesus asked the question, Who do you say that I am? Who is Jesus to you? This question tells how intense our faith really is. If Jesus was merely a good teacher or an itinerant, healer, when it would easily be able to give him a half ear. But if Jesus was something more than this, if Jesus was truly the very revelation of God, then we begin to understand the extent of God's love for the world. It is said that St. Teresa, when she was over 40 and years into living into the convent, one day noticed a picture depicting Jesus being scourged. 
She had seen the same picture hundreds of times before, but in that particular moment, she saw it as she had never seen it before. It was a new revelation. She saw God suffering, suffering for the love of her. She fell to her knees in thanksgiving and wonder, and when she arose, she arose a new soul. This was the great divide in her life, she said, the experience that changed everything for her. And she arose with a sense of unpayable debt. Jesus asked, but who do you say that I am? One of the disciples, Peter, had the right answer. You are the Messiah, he said. How does that sound to you? Is that how you would have answered Jesus' question? Can you say with an honest and open heart, without reservation, that Jesus Christ is the Anointed One of God? If not, I have been there too at different times in my life. I hope I would say that, but I'm sure with the moments of doubt, I may not have. It was when Peter said that Jesus was the Messiah, that Jesus revealed to his disciples the plan for the ministry. He spoke plainly, saying, The Son of Man must undergo great suffering, be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. Peter, the man who had just recognized Jesus as the Messiah, was shocked by these words, and he took Jesus aside and began to rebuke him. Now, rebuke is a harsh word that we don't use much anymore. It basically means that Jesus was scolded by Peter and told him that he was wrong. It was almost as if he were saying, Look, Jesus, enough of this nonsense. Let me tell you who you are. Life is difficult, and too often we think that God ought to make our lives better for us. And in that, we are just like Simon Peter. We think we know best how God should go about the business of life. But Peter would soon discover that we can't do this. Jesus said to his friend Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are setting your mind on the world and not on the divine. Christ was telling Peter rather bluntly, that he needed to get back in line, for he was trying to put himself above God. Each of us have experienced Christ in many and various ways. We have experienced Jesus as the divine presence of God. Others have experienced Jesus as the one who died on the cross, giving us salvation. Others have seen Jesus in action, allowing us to receive healing, comfort, and hope. Many of us have experienced the newness of life. Shortly after this exchange with his disciples, Jesus spoke to the crowd that was following them on the same subject. He spoke about what it means to be a follower. If anyone wants to become my follower, they must deny themselves, take up the cross, and follow me. Now, denying ourselves and picking up a cross can be a difficult thing for us to do. It could be difficult because it goes against everything that our culture tells us is important. From the time we were toddlers, we have heard, be your own person, strive to be number one. You deserve the best. And this has led to all sorts of problems with people taking unfair advantage of others for their own personal gain. Allow the words of Jesus to challenge you. What will it profit you to gain the whole world and forfeit your life? Jesus calls us to walk in God's way. Today we hear the call of Jesus to proclaim who Jesus is for each of us. We also hear through Jesus' invitation that we are to give of ourselves. When we give ourselves to others, when we show others Christ-like love, we are walking in God's way. 
when we do this. We are doing what Jesus has asked us to do, deny ourselves, pick up the cross, and follow him. Who is Jesus to you? Is Christ our Savior? Is Jesus the Messiah, the Son of God? Is Jesus Christ the one we welcome to sit beside us as we worship? Christ Jesus is walking with us. May we become aware of the gift of life we receive as we follow Jesus. Let us live in Jesus and share our lives with others. Let us deny ourselves, take up our cross and follow Christ. Let us walk with the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you.